to deal with. A lot of the drone companies, there is no QAQC and they beta test with their customers. And then they come back and try and blame other people in the company for their failings. I think we've seen some of that in the community um, and we're going to see fallout from that. We are seeing fallout from that. And I think that the other thing is, is people don't understand that if they're in the drone business since the 2012 reauthorization bill, drones are aircraft. People have tried to have their feet in both camps and say, well, I'm like an amateur and these aren't aircraft, and then when it suits them, I'm a drone pilot, yada, yada. Um, we got to work on our script. The other thing is the hype cycles, I think it's totally out of control. And I got my little skier up here, he's got a little GoPro on his helmet, and he's skiing down here towards the, the trough of disillusionment. I think that the community, in some cases, whoop, sorry, has been almost its own worst enemy. I think a lot of companies planned and thought that the FAA was actually going to uh, make that uh, September of 2015 mandate and were shocked that they didn't. It started. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, you know, some of us have been at this for a couple of years, but I think people kind of ran out of money. And then the last, uh, right before the chasm, there is the registration task force. Uh, I'm not happy with what happened in the registration task force. I think that the 250 gram number was a totally arbitrary number that was pulled together by a, well, it was a Ministry of Defense report that talked about 250 grams could be fa fatal. That is true. On the task force, I don't think we had good representation because we didn't have anybody there that knew anything about engineering because there's a thing called material density. If I hit somebody with a 250 gram steel projectile or a lead projectile, yes, that could be fatal. If I try and hit you with 250 pound or, uh, grams of packing peanuts, it's going to be hard for me to do damage. I do not think that that was taken into consideration for the registration task force. I had it out with some of the folks that were on the registration task force. They told me, oh, well, we wrote into the recommendation that the FAA could not use the 250 gram risk threshold in the future. And we're in polite company, so I won't tell them what I said. But fast forward to this micro arc, and 250 grams is like the established risk threshold now for the NAS. So I hope everybody enjoys their, you know, unregistered, uncertified, under 250 gram drone, because that's exactly where we're headed. 2016 for me is the year of intellectual honesty and I've been putting it out there and let me just say that I'm getting lots of pushback on that concept. I think we have to be uh, accountable as an industry. We can't be making false claims. We have to be responsible. We have to take the lead in our own future uh, with the other folks, the other stakeholders that are already in the NAS. That's another thing a lot of people don't understand in the drone community. We, I think we first kind of went through that when we were on the small U.S. arc. There's some veterans in here. Um, there are other people already in the NAS. You know, there's, there's the GA people, there's the 121 people, the 135 people. There's, you know, uh, hang gliders, balloonists, everybody else. And the NAS already has rules. So the drone community is kind of like, we're, we're the new kid on the block moving into uh, an existing framework. And a lot of people don't understand that. Another thing I don't think they understand is that the, the FAA isn't like dealing with the city council or the permit office or something else. The, the FAA is charged with making the NAS safe. They have a lot of people, 50,000 people doing that. They have a huge budget. Um, they do a really great job with the 121, part 121 people, and even GA is pretty safe. So if we're going to want to get into that, I think we're going to have to prove as a community that we understand what that means, or we understand the, the seriousness of moving into a, a safe space. So, you know, I always tell people, hey, you know, you have to uh, think about the community or the business that you want to be in. I think that the registration task force, again, if you look at uh, this guy from Atlanta Hobby, since the, the uh, recommendations were released for the, uh, the task force, his business is down 70%. Most of the uh, consumer drone manufacturers I talk to, their sales are down. 
we, we've all read in the news what, what's going on with 3D robotics. Um, I think we're going to see more of that here in the future. The other thing uh, we have here is another uh, clip from the micro arc. I don't think that people understand what this means. They, uh, for over 250 grams, uh, they want to do some industry consensus performance standards. Some people that have been on ASTM and RTCA, which I participated in both of those processes, that has been going on for over a decade. I asked about this on the call. I said, well, who's going to do the industry consensus standards? Well, we don't know. We don't have that figured out. Okay. So I'm hoping it's not going to take another 10 years. But the thing is that, uh, that the really is the sticky wicket here is the manufacturer of the U.S. certifies to the FAA that the UAS, UAS does not, you know, failure mode, blah, 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 going to cause serious injury. I do not believe that people in the consumer drone industry, the OEMs, understand what that means. Certification. Or they probably would have not went along with this. I wouldn't have went along with it. I'd be like, whoa, this is, this is pretty hairy. Anyway, all of these types of mistakes are going to uh, lead us to what I believe is a no drone zone or a limited drone zone where it's going to be very hard to make money. I think that's another thing. When this S SFAR 107 comes out, there are a lot of people in the community that believe that we're going to be able to do whatever we want. You're going to be able to fly wherever you want, fly at night, fly beyond visual line of sight, and they're dreaming because that's not what's going to be in 107. So, I think that we need to uh, focus and not our message and also um, when we go out there and represent ourselves as a community. I think we need credible and qualified advocacy representation. I do not believe that this community has any qualified representation at this point. I think we need to manage the hype, uh, you know, with the drones. I think people uh, are making just wild claims and we can't deliver on those and I think that's going to erode our credibility in the future. I think we need to focus on a business um, or civilian use message uh, and really just get away from the military stuff. I've been talking about that for a while. Although with the military stuff I will say that if you watch what they're doing their airframes are staying pretty much the same. It's kind of the uh, let's say traditional aviation um, style. I think we need science-based integration. I've been beating this drum for a few years. The community or the drone manufacturers should put money or put up some money to do some scientific research to understand what the risks are to non-participants on the ground. Also to the GA community, what are the risks of these small aircraft hitting like a 172 control surface, wing, windshield, prop, um, I've, I've tried to talk to people about this, the manufacturers, I've suggested they put up, you know, some money. They all push back, they don't, they, well, the FAA is going to do some testing. I said, okay, well, fair enough, but who do you want to ask the questions? Do you want the FAA to ask the questions, or do you want to ask the questions? I usually get a shoulder shrug, which tells me that people don't understand the FAA game. I see the company spend a lot of money on sending people to uh, exotic locations all around the world um, to take drone selfies. To me, you could get those photos free on Instagram. It'd be much better to spend that money on science, but that's me. Global harmonization. Uh, we have to realize in Europe, they're, they, we, they have you know 5,000 certificated operators where we have 5,000 exemptions here. It's a little bit of a different process. The other thing is some of the stuff that happens over here migrates to other parts of the world, whatever the FAA does, most of the other CAAs 